Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Welcome to Projections, our weekly show about virtual reality and augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, a lot of people have PSVR. That's right, I think it's the best selling of the, of the trifecta of the major uh, platforms. Yeah. And that's because a lot of people have PS4. Yep. And there was a very big push last uh, fall, winter, to launch PSVR. Mm -hmm. uh, but where are the games? Well, come on now. We've had some good games. Uh, we had Farpoint earlier this year, uh, which introduced the PS Aim, and I actually enjoyed that game a lot. Uh, you're right, though. There's, there haven't been a, a ton of amazing hits come out of PlayStation. At least nothing that's not attached to a flat screen game, which is a yeah. totally fair way to do it. Resident Evil, really intense. Well, today we attended a media event that was a part of their PlayStation Paris Games Week, and there they, have, of course, announced a bunch of PlayStation 4 games, mm -hmm. in addition to your standard flat screen HDR 4K games, also PSVR this games. This is great news, right? This is saying PlayStation is in it for the long term. Like, you have to be with VR to begin with, and they're going to do it. They're here, and they introduced, what, like eight games about? I mean, a, a lot of games. Yes, and so we got to play some. So let's start off by talking about something that was developed by First Party Studio, mm -hmm. uh, London Studios, uh, Blood and Truth. Right, now you, you said that this was based on an earlier like demo that shipped with the with the PSVR, is that right? Yes, the Heist, London Heist, was a series of experiences, demos, wasn't really a cohesive game, yeah. but I think Sony considered that an experiment in what you could do, a sampling of what you could do in VR. I quite enjoyed it, but really wish there was a full-fledged game there. Yeah. And this apparently is that full-fledged game. It seems like game. it. They want to release what they said, a you know, full AAA kind of experience. They wouldn't even talk about length, but they said that it's going to be decent. Um, the experience that we got was inside of a casino. Yeah. Uh, we, we are like a, a rival mobster, I assume. We're not a cop, mm -hmm. and we are breaking in, and we're trying to, you know, get get through and get to the uh, to the top guy there. Yeah, and the mechanically, you're holding these move controllers. So mm -hmm. It remind me a lot of not only the tone of the London Heist demos, but a lot of the mechanics there. You have the two move controllers. You're putting a pistol, picking a pistol, reloading it. Moving around, it's all kind of node-based movement. You see these arrows in the ground. You hit your move button. You teleport there. But there's a lot of actual physicality. I think you walk. Like, you actually do yeah. move through space. Yeah, it's not like a fade up, fade down. Right, tele right. Yeah. The animation plays. Yeah. And then there's ver uh, physicality like you would actually climb up a ladder or very diehard like you're actually going to be crawling through a vent. Yeah. And they really seem like they want to showcase a variety of interactive experiences, mm -hmm. even though it's a shooter. I liked that stuff. There wasn't enough of that for me. I mean, it started out with a lot of that, but I was never in danger when I was climbing a ladder or right. inside of a vent. Um, I hope that they explore that a little bit more. Uh, most of the game was just standing, uh, walking from node to node. At one point, you have to set some charges. So mm -hmm. you come up to a node, and this pack automatically opens up, and you grab the charge, and then you grab the timer, and you, you enter the button so that it starts. Same um, with lock picking. You know, you walk up to a door. That was interesting. The lock pick kit would open, you grab the two lock picks, and then you see like a, a projection of, yeah. a, of a lock there, and you have to pick the lock, but you're, you're totally safe. Mm -hmm. Even like the most interactive world element thing you'd see was uh, using a security camera, pressing buttons on a security camera to switch between the feeds, and actually zooming in. Um, I thought that was pretty cool, was actually. Yeah, that, yeah, that was, uh, you know, felt like the controls were made for VR. It wasn't, totally. this is, and this is what I love about games that are ground up VR games, is that all the interfaces are right. But it was also an action game. And then things do get heated. At least in the demo we played, we started chasing a target down, running through a casino. And by running, I also mean hitting the move button, seeing the node icon, right. and then you're running down. But while you're running, you are peeking around corners, you're firing your pistol, trying to get headshots on the, the mobsters that are shooting at you. And it felt like being you know, like in a John Wick action movie. Yeah, totally. You can shoot fire extinguishers that cause, for whatever reason, the world to go bullet time. <laughs> and that's, it looks awesome. And yeah. you can, you get all your accuracy in those moments because uh, you have the time to aim into these moving targets. Uh, headshots matter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that, that counts. And uh, generally, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. When you say you're running down a hall, I, I would get nervous if I heard that. It's actually quite smooth. There's no ramp up, ramp down of your movement uh, speed. It's mm -hmm. all pretty constant. 
and it's it's not nauseating. Right, it felt a little bit on rails at that point yeah. in that sequence, but you're right, totally non nauseating. And because uh, they put a lot of effort into the the dialogue, into the facial animations, it felt like a really high quality narrative experience. Mm -hmm. So very looking forward to Blood and Truth. Um, they'll have more details to share about release date and length of game in the future. Yeah, uh, the one thing I was super excited to see at this event was that more, more games are using the Farpoint gun, yes. the, the PS Aim. Mm -hmm. And uh, starting with their first multiplayer expansion. Farpoint multiplayer. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a 1v1. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't see too many co op, or uh, not co op, but uh, competitive multiplayer expansions come out that are strictly 1v1. But uh, we're seeing that not just in this game, by the way, but in a couple games at, uh, on, on PSVR. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. They, they've taken the, the base game, they've given you those five weapons, and then they've done 15 more variations to all of these weapons. So and you unlock them as you play through this. And uh, there's basically a huge map, and you jump in there, and it's you against somebody else. And you can do random matchmaking or hook up with a buddy. Yeah, and when you say huge map, 1v1, it makes me like worried. Like, okay, am I just going to be running around looking for the person the entire time? Yeah. You're not really, because it's almost like a MOBA. There are nodes within the world that you run up to, and you can actually spawn a creep to help you. It's interesting. And aliens and, and, and spiders yeah. that become your allies are color coded and they will roam the map uh, and attack and kind of find your opponent while you flank or use teleporters to, to navigate. You have resource units of some kind that you're spending on these nodes and you walk up to them. As long as you remain in a radius, the charge meter goes up and if you stay there long enough, they, you spend your money and, and out they go. And you, yeah, like you said, you can use them as cover or you can you know, use them as a distraction. And They're effective. It, like, some I was are, killed are, by them a couple times. Sure, some are powerful, some aren't. Mm -hmm. As a player, though, you only get points for killing the other human. That's right, in this deathmatch mode. And uh, playing 1v1 versus you really reminded me of that mid-90s, late-90s mm -hmm. Quake 1v1 experience. Why where, strictly Quake? I mean, it just it felt like the... the, the the uh, knowing the map was important. If for sure. Like flanking, having a situational awareness of where the opponent is, yeah. Um, and that intensity of the satisfaction when I get one kill, it's it's about outmaneuvering, not just aiming. Outmaneuvering, not thinking, and out thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've had a lot more fun playing you. I wouldn't recommend playing the developers ever. It's, <laughs> it's just not fun. <laughs> yeah, they're very good, and the weapons are very powerful. Some of the yeah. weapons. Uh, another game that used the PS Aim, and I'm super happy to hear that more games are using them. Totally. Uh, this game was announced earlier this year for our first chance to play it. It's called Bravo Team. And this one is another multiplayer game, two-player multiplayer, but it's co-op. Mm -hmm. And it looks like your gritty modern warf warfare style first-person shooter, uh, except Gameplay-wise, it plays a little more like your rail shooter Time Crisis arcade game. Yeah, I never played Time Crisis, I'll take your word for it, but it is definitely arcade with a realistic feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, I, this was the, the game I had the most fun with, I have to be honest with you, at the show. Uh, you and I played together, and it just felt visceral. I mean, I felt like we were taking fire, and we, we, your default stance is actually taking cover. Right. You press a button to rise up, yes. and then you, you take a few shots, take back down, you know, reload, uh, maybe shoot out some windows. We were on a bridge with all these wrecked cars in between us and the, and the enemies, and so we taken out some windows to get a better shot, line things up, mm -hmm. and it's all about using your reticule, yeah. which feels great on the aim, doesn't it? Totally. It's it's what we wanted on you know on the touch controllers, people building their own PVC yeah. controllers. Those your point, you know, having the aim, having that tangible object that's perfectly mapped to your assault rifle, super satisfying, and getting the natural stereoscopic effects of looking down a sight, mm -hmm. and they can do things like blur out the other vision and making the sight really clear, and then getting those headshots, even yeah. though it's an arcade shooter, you need to you know, tap, 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 super satisfying. Yeah, and the co-op aspect, as always in VR, is just amped up. There's voice communication, so I could hear you just fine constantly, and there was a matter of coordination we had to do. Totally, because it's not free movement. When you talk about being on a bridge, we're on a, it's a linear experience. We're just traversing down this bridge, and along the bridge, there are nodes. You know, the width of the bridge, maybe mm -hmm. three or four nodes. You can jump behind that car, I'll jump behind that car, but we're communicating and saying, leapfrog me there. Cover me. Enemies are coming here. Yeah. It felt like we were actually cooperating. Um, and there was enough stimuli mm -hmm. to, to actually feel uh, to feel threatened. Yeah, sign me up. I want to play more of this one. One more thing I want to mention is when you actually jump between the nodes, yeah. it switches the third person. Isn't it's that just, weird? Yeah. Yeah, th that's certainly a safe way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, everyone's trying their own locomotion, 
And this works, uh, there's a question of whether or not you're vulnerable when mm -hmm. you're doing that because right. you have no control over the speed of that transition. You just basically look at that node, say go, then it, out of body experience, you watch your character walk there. Once your character's there, you snap into place. Exactly. Um, we were playing pretty conservatively, so we never took fire during those transitions. Yeah. It'd be nice if you do because mm -hmm. then there's more risk reward. Right. And then developers are targeting a about three to four hour single player or cooperative experience uh, for about $40. So my concern is whether there's going to be enough meat in this game mm. to warrant that price. Right. Uh, one other game that uses the PS Aim that was just newly announced for PS Aim compatible is Doom VFR. Yep. Coming out soon. I, it's coming out in a month, December 1st. Mm. Uh, and this is the Bethesda made for VR game. Uh, of course, they're also doing Skyrim and Fallout for PC. But uh, this is this is Doom VFR, and this was your first chance to play it. Is that right? Yeah. What do you think? I, well, whereas like Bravo Team really simplified controls, you're focusing on firing, reloading, switching weapons, and yeah. jumping between nodes. Doom, this felt like every single button on the PSM controller <laughs> had a purpose. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, but it's going to be a, a little bit of work to memorize what each of those right. purposes is. And in the you know 15 minutes of playtime I had with that game, I really couldn't get acclimated to yeah. all the movement mechanics. You can have free strafe, you know, lateral motion. The D-pad. The D-pad, yeah. which, which makes a lot of sense for, for a shooter like this. And of course, look, holding your rifle, looking down the sights. Mm -hmm. But there's also teleport, which is a different button in the front, and, when you, and then also a grenade launcher. And when you teleport, it's a look-based, gaze-based teleport, yeah. which also slows down time. There was just a lot of things going on, and I just kept on dying because they were putting enemies in front of me that I needed to teleport behind them, but it was very claustrophobic. Normally in these events, they put you in some sort of easy mode, if mm -hmm. not a god mode, and we were in... If we were, we're horrible at this game because <laughs> we, we were dying quite frequently. I actually kind of like that because I saw how difficult the game would be. Um, when you, we've covered this before, but when you get damaged an enemy enough, they start to glow. They brought back the telefrag, which yes. I think is cool. Yep. Uh, the interesting thing is though, normally when you teleport in this game, you gaze at the spot on the ground that you want to teleport to. When you want to telefrag something, you gaze at the thing. Yeah. So that, that, that takes a moment to, to get used to. And just the fact that you're gazing at the floor to teleport, I'm used to coming from the PC. Most of the games with teleport, they use a pointing-based yes, system. Right. So that, that takes a little getting used to. Um, but the game is also playable without the aim. It's playable strictly with the wands or mm -hmm. with the gamepad. Yep. So I mean, it's probably going to be just like use the thing that you think feels the best. And I'm, I'm just not sold on this feeling like Doom. You know, when the 2016 yeah. flat screen Doom came out, it was true to the original feel of Doom, very fast paced. You're just like speed running through the map, moving fast, moving fast, shooting, shooting, shooting. Here, definitely had to take more consideration of where I'm gonna teleport, how I'm moving. I'm just, I wasn't just acclimated to that movement. I know what you mean. I, I, fingers crossed, I think that's hope, I hope that's just a matter of being not quite comfortable with the controls yet. Yep. And once you spend a half hour in there and it becomes second nature, yeah. you'll feel more comfortable moving around and it will be like that whole Doom feel. Or maybe it'll play better with a different type of controller. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another game that Bethesda is putting out, out very, very soon, is Skyrim mm -hmm. uh, for PSVR. Now you played this at E3 and you had some concerns there. I did, yeah. And I talked about that in our E3 coverage. When I played it there, it was weird, like it felt like the whole world had been compressed, like the three-dimensional aspect had been squished together. And as I walked through the space, it, the uh, scale would change, it was odd. So I d really wanted to you know, put the headset on after you played it today, just to see it. And it's gone, like that, that, that effect is gone. And I'm very happy to see that because Skyrim is a world we all want to explore in VR. Yes, I mean, totally. Even if there's no adventure, if I don't have anything to do, I just want to walk through that world. Yeah. And it looks, it's definitely low res, like you will see some pixels, <laughs> but it looks fine, you yep. know, and it looks, it, and there's a lot going on. Yeah, and the, the being immersed in that world, walking up to monoliths and seeing things come down from the sky, yeah. holding your weapons with the, the move controllers, holding a sword or holding a shield or using firing fireballs in each of your hands, that is definitely immersive. Mm -hmm. But Skyrim's a complicated game. Any open world RPG like that from Bethesda, as you all know, has menu systems, upgrade paths, maps to manage, and again, felt like a game where mapping those systems into these two controllers, like they're 
running to the limits of how many actions you could do. Yeah, the Fallout probably suffers from some of the same things. I right. mean, I understand why they're bringing those games to VR, though, because they're natural starting points. Everyone who's played them would love to be, live inside them. Yes. Uh, so, of course, there's going to have to be you know, some compromises involved. And the other question I have is, can this game work and be comfortable for long durations? A lot of people who play Fallout and Skyrim play for hours yeah. at a time oh. because there's so much to do, but we have not yet had a VR game where you're expected to, to be in there for an hour, two hours, for mm -hmm. a 40 plus hour long game, so who knows? Yeah. Right. There's a I, lot of game there. I don't think that they'll have a, so much of a problem. Like the hardcore, I think that they'll just have VR face. That'll just be how they look normally. And PSVR is very comfortable to wear. <laughs> well, if you're looking for a more sh a shorter experience, there is a game that we played that is designed to be short specifically. And this one is either single player or co-op, but co-op in a asymmetrical way, uh, which not a lot of games do. On PSVR, this is a, it's called League of War VR Arena. It's not co-op. It's, oh, it's it's multiplayer. It's, it's, it's competitive. It's one v one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is this is a twenty dollar game that they're going to have on the store. I'm sure this will be an impulse buy for a lot of PSVR owners. It's uh, it's basically a rock paper scissors game uh, with with five elements. Mm -hmm. You have all these in front of you as as the gamepad player. Um, I'm sitting there, and I can see the VR player on the other side of the table. Right. And the table's about like this long. Yeah, so we're like, sitting on either end yeah. of this long table, and imagine this is a battlefield, and we're just sending our units against each other. We're yeah. Just deploying them. You don't control where they go. You just deploy them. And uh, it's there's little cooldowns for every unit, mm -hmm. and you just click on them, and then, then they go. As the gamepad player, I think I can spawn them a little faster. Balance here is interesting, right? VR, I'm a little more immersed. I was playing as a VR player. I get to drop my units down and actually position them. And yeah, you can rotate them. them. I can't do that. Right. That's interesting. You just selected. So yeah. as a balance, for you not even being able to target as well, yeah. you could respawn them faster. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if there's a unit that you desperately need, you can prioritize it. Right. So you just highlight it and hold the button down. Everything else stops you know, ramping up yeah. and all the energy goes to that. I don't know, it, it seemed like a pretty simplistic game, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, PSVR needs more of these asymmetrical games. Yes. I, I, that is one of the great selling points of v PSVR, where the player on the couch sees something entirely different than the person in VR. I can think of two games that do that besides this, and I'm glad to see another one. Right. Uh, another game that we saw uh, is single player only. It's called The Inpatient, and this is an example of an experience where it's definitely a long-form narrative and yeah. horror-based. It felt like a in-color Wilson's Heart kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah, so you're, you're in a mental institution, you have some trauma in the past, you have amnesia, of course, and you're at least what we play, we were just going through, speaking with NPCs, they're helping us recover our lost memories, going into these nightmare scenarios. Um, and it wasn't really for me. It yeah. was, it, it it was, was the a, jump scare that did it, wasn't there it? There was a jump scare, absolutely. <laughs> there was a jump scare, and the, you know, it was a, definitely a slower paced game. Yeah. Um, it, you had dialogue options where you look at an NPC and they would have an option presented to your left, an option presented to your right. Mm -hmm. You pick the one you want to choose, and then you press the button. Uh, this one I played with a gamepad, and it did an interesting thing that it made use of the gamepad as a motion controller. In what way? Uh, there, was an, um, there was a sequence where it said, pick up this piece of paper, mm -hmm. and I held the R2 button down the gamepad, and it picked up the paper, and then I had to turn the gamepad around, and it was mapped to turning and looking behind the sheet of paper, which then activated a, a sequence. That's cool. So you didn't even have the move controller. It no, was strictly it was a gamepad. Game That's something that they, that they can do the other boys can't. Yep, and there is some freedom of movement here. You actually you know, walk around, snap, move around. I uh, didn't get a sense of the, the full story here, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, you know, we're fans of single-player narrative games. The, the horror genre and the jump scares just maybe maybe isn't for me. Yeah, not for me either. Uh, yeah. One last little surprise we had was that Sprint Vector is coming to PSVR. This is a game that we've played tw uh, twice now at uh, GDC last year and again at E3. And uh, it's, you know, it's, it's basically going to be the, the game that gets a lot of people in shape. It's, it's a game that... Where <laughs> Full body you, movement. It really is. Like, your locomotion mechanic is doing this number where you're like cross-country skiing yeah. and you're pu pushing yourself off the floor and you're leaping into the air and then Being you're Superman. flying. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's definitely... It's, it's just, there's a lot of motion to this game. You and, know, I was surprised that they announced it for PSVR because the company that makes it, Servios, they made raw data. And yeah. one of their mantras was really full body, you know, room scale, they embrace room scale VR. Hmm. And PSVR technologically is probably the most limited uh, in terms of the tracking. Yeah. 
but they still put this game out there. And I, I played it, and it was fun. It, it looked much more polished than what I'd seen at GDC. Mm -hmm. uh, very bright, cartoony graphics. I was racing against seven other AI players in this instance, but they were, there will be eight-player uh, multiplayer versus, and I was having a lot of fun. Once you get into a good stride, I was playing the easiest map, I was just racing down the path. And it's not just a straight line. You're making left no. turns and right turns, climbing these hills, vaulting yourself. Yeah. And it really felt, feels like a game, and we said this back when we played it at GDC, where you're gonna get a lot of satisfaction on, on having these streaks of movement and um, getting high scores. This is one of those games that's going to be uh, difficult to master. It's yeah. one of those easy to learn kind of games, but definitely difficult. There's a lot of nuance in the way that you move your body right. in this game, the way that you're swooshing left and right to go in those directions, and also the way that you've you got to time your uh, your speed and your jumps in a way mm -hmm. that's really intricate. They, they talked about this new climbing mechanic where if, when you hit a climbing wall, the momentum that you have when you hit the wall affects how quickly you can climb. Right. So there's just a lot of like chaining of, of moves together, kind of like in a Tony Hawk kind of way, but yeah. more in a first person VR experience. Um, I think that this is, like I said, it's going to get people in shape. And it's also going to be something where the good players are really good and you don't want to play them. <laughs> and if you're worried about that, there will also be a new comfort mode for PSVR so you can get that max speed pretty quickly. So that's a spectrum of PSVR games that we played at this media event. There are other, uh, some other ones that were announced that they weren't ready to show, mm -hmm. but we'll be looking forward to that. But PSVR, one year later, I'm still glad they're putting money into development, both AAA and $20 shorter experiences, yeah. and also making use of that PS AIM controller, which mm -hmm. I like quite a bit. Yeah, likewise. All right, well, when those games will come out, we'll be talking more about them. But until next time, we'll see you on the internet. Bye.